Some Sal. I'm and I've been. It's been a long time coming, but here it is. It's Yay. Ultimate Spider-Man Volume Six, aka Ultimate Venom, or just Venom, Venom. according to this book. Well, this I mean, first appearance of Venom, first appearance of Ultimate of Ultimate Venom. Yeah, do we Ultimate call him Venom. Ultimate Spider-Man all the time? We do, but only when we're referring to the book. Yeah, I don't like go like, and then Ultimate Spider-Man did a backflip. Like, no, yeah, that's. Oh true. my God! Look, it's Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah, nobody else. Yeah. Did. Unlike the horrible cartoon show that Disney XD had the mercy to cancel after like 12 seasons or whatever recently, which was called Ultimate Spider-Man but had no resemblance to this series with a horrible voice actor and like just it was awful. But he always kept trying to be the ultimate Spider-Man and you're like, shut up. He doesn't say that. No, no (laughs) one says that. I mean, what other names could they possibly give him? Like... Uh, absolute Spider-Man. No, it's spectacular yeah. and amazing and stupendous and like yeah, but friendly he, neighborhood. But when you come down to it, he's just Spider-Man. Yes. Yeah, but he wants to like Nick Fury tries to get him to like become even better than he was. It doesn't matter. Become the authoritative Spider-Man. Right. Or the essential be Spider-Man. The indispensable what should Spider-Man. be better Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. Can we just have that? <laughs> right? Just better. Uh, or Spider-Man cubed. Anyway. <laughs> Ultimate Venom takes place in the contiguous ongoing saga that is the Ultimate Spider-Man story by uh, Brian Michael Bendis and Mark Bagley. Uh, this is six issues, but there's a lot going on in it. So, you know, plus I'm going to have to give you guys a little bit of context. For context, in the last episode, okay. there was like a dude who was pretending to be Spider-Man. He was just some jackass, and he killed Gwen Stacy's dad with a bomb. And then Aunt May took in Gwen Stacy, so Gwen's living at the house. It was so random that it, there was a fake Spider-Man in the last Ultimate Spider-Man, and they never explained it. No. And you're like, what? And they never bothered to explain it ever again. And everyone was like, oh, is that Mysterio? No! It's just someone who's really good at sewing. Yeah, and yeah. he also has, like, random tech that allows him to approximate spider powers. I mean, yeah, I get it, figure. Uh, but I it also there was a plan, and then well, it, it cast just doubt on Spider-Man being a good person or not in the public eye, you know, like yeah, that. but like in the laziest way, like here's something from nowhere yes. with no explanation. Yes, but it was really well executed. Because you all thought the, Spider-Man suddenly died. Well, all the that was Marvel Knight Spider-Man. Jesus! Oh, you're still talking about this one? Yes. yes. This is the episode. <laughs> we did. You want to watch Marvel Knights? You click the link above Ben here, and you can see it. And you'll I'm gonna see, go with oh, that link. Yeah, you I'll click it. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> so anyway, a lot of stuff happened, but the most important thing is MJ dumped Peter, mm. and. This brilliantly executes what it feels like to be a 15-year-old white kid in Mm. suburbia being dumped by your way out of your league girlfriend. (laughs) Not that I know anything about that. But uh, he's lying on the floor surrounded by his costume and all he's thinking about is that she dumped him. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I know, I just, I should call her. Like you would. But he's like, no, I shouldn't call her. That makes me, I should go to her house. That's worse. (laughs) I shouldn't do any of those things. I know, like, I'll kidnap her in the morning. Right? Like, oh, no, nah, 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 I'm, I'm... So then he's, like, talking about how he's, like, oh, like, you know, I just, I need to hear her voice. I'm going to call her. Because she broke up with him. Not because they don't have a compatibility or because she's seeing somebody else. It's just because she can't deal with being thrown off bridges by goblins. Right. Hey, Which, look, you know... Fair point. It's <laughs> really fair point. Yeah, I can't argue with that. Hey, you're going to date me? You might get thrown off a bridge by a supervillain. Pass. <laughs> you broke up with me over that?! <laughs> Okay, is this his house? Yeah, he lives in the basement. Okay, he, why is there a human skull on the wall? Because he's a science geek. It could be an ape skull. Yeah, it doesn't look very... Uh, it's vaguely so you never know. <laughs> in order to get that idea out of his head, he throws the phone across the room, which breaks the phone. Mm-hmm. And I was like, now I have no phone. What if she wants to call me? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I know, I should go outside her window and watch her dial her phone, and if my numbers come up... I'll just break it. Right. So he he goes to, like, retrieve his phone. He's moving some stuff around. And By the way, it's not that he has a Harry Potter situation where Aunt May is like, you live in the basement because you're not my son. It, no, but, he's a teenager who wants to be able to come and go from his house. Right. He wants to be cool. Space. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and it's much bigger because it's, like, the size of the house. Right. So, like, he likes the basement, and so he moved down there. He does have a bedroom, which now Gwen stays in because ah, she lives there. Right. Uh, but he's in the basement, so that's why when he goes to retrieve his phone, he finds this box of old stuff. That isn't his. Ah. And when he goes through it, he finds a VHS tape, which for those kids at home, that's, it used to be how you recorded 
video, like the video you talk about like on your phone or the one you're watching right now, it used to be recorded on a camera that like put it on a, an arcane tape. Yeah. On actual film. You had to, and and, and well, you had to hold film. it and you couldn't watch right, it unless you had tape, a device but... that played this little rectangle. Yeah. In any case, he finds it and a, a, along with a bunch of photos. <laughs> uh, it's not film. It's not <laughs> film. That's shut up. That's no, right. that's specific. Yeah, please. <laughs> so he finds these photos of himself as a little boy playing with a rocket and his father. Ooh. And he's like, oh shit. Because like Peter is an orphan and Spider-Man and his and, and he's very scientifically oriented. Remember his father is the one who came up with the web formula formula. Like scientific formula in the okay. first place, and Peter's the one who filled in the gaps and fixed it. Mm-hmm. So his dad was a scientist, and as we'll find out later, that's what kind of got him into trouble. Peter, his father. Uh-huh. Oh, okay, not Peter himself. Yeah. No, uh, the spider formula. Or no, or just, just being, being a scientist. Being, okay. Well, being a super scientist. Ah, uh, oh, a super scientist. Well, a scientist. <laughs> what is a super? Scientist? A super scientist invents things that don't exist in this reality. <laughs> You know, like a scientist does right. boring research and furthers along, uh, you know, progress it's like at, incremental at a, progress. Yeah, at so, a yeah. snail's pace. So, <laughs> super scientists invent teleportation machines and time traveling devices. Doctor Connors is a super scientist. Yeah, Doctor yeah. Octavius it's is just, a super scientist. Yes. Incidentally, Doc Connors shows up in this because there's like a story that takes place between these books that was not in Ultimate Spider-Man, where Spider-Man fights the lizard and then saves him and reverts Connors back to being Dr. Connors again. Oh. That's all you need to know. He fought the lizard and Dr. Connors was the lizard. If you know anything about the lizard, that's all you need to know. Okay. But Doc Connors is in this, and he's not really so much as a super scientist, although he did create his, he did turn himself into a lizard, so yes, he is. So he, and grew back his arm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But so only a lizard a arm, scientist. and then it turned him into a lizard. That, that is super science on my account. I, that's fair. So anyway, uh, so all these people are super, super scientists. <laughs> Although, just interestingly enough, like, Richard Parker doesn't really invent anything of any super variety with the exception of the formula and this other thing that happens in this book. Okay. But uh, anyway, Peter finds these photos of his dad and his mom and this random dude in a, in a laboratory. Uh-huh. He's like, oh, who's that? Who's that? Solve the mystery of this random guy. Exactly. So is Aunt... it an Osborne? No. Okay, thank God. There's no Osbournes in this Yay. book. Yay! Yay! <laughs> So Aunt May and uh, Gwen Stacy are making cookies, and Aunt May is telling um, Gwen about the time that she like flashed Jimi Hendrix at a concert, and like she's like, "You are so cool! Like, can you be my mom?" You know that kind of thing. Uh-huh. And uh, Peter's just like so excited because all this kid wants is to belong and to like have a connection with the family that he never knew. Mm-hmm. So like he's clutching this tape like it's like the you know the, the cure for cancer, and. The the girls look at him and they're like, "Would you like some cookies?" He's like, "No, I'm good. I'm good." He just wanders off, <laughs> and they're like, "Man, he has taken that breakup real bad. <laughs> he doesn't even want cookies." Yeah, and it's funny because Aunt May's like, "How was the breakup?" She goes, "Word of school is it was, it was epic." <laughs> <laughs> epic. Yeah. And, and he's like, epic, you say? Yeah, and she's like, that's sad. I'm down with that. Yeah. So Pete puts on the tape, and it's a, it's a video of a picnic that the Parker family had in like Central Park. Okay. And so there's like a little boy, Peter, and there's young Uncle Ben and young Aunt May and Richard and Mary Parker. And this group uh, that's also with them, the Brock family. Uh, Edward Brock, uh, the scientist that works with Richard Parker, and Edward Brock Jr., who's around Peter's age, a little older than him. And, and he's so, a punk. And he's kind of a dick, but like you don't really get that impression right away. But the first view of Edward Brock that we get as the little boy Brock, Brock Jr., is him hitting Peter in the back of the head with a frisbee, but he does admit that it's a mistake. And does he say yell heads up? Uh, he does not say heads up. Dick move. But he does say like he's sorry, like he feels bad, and then he invites Peter to play with him later. And at no point does he go. It, it, Bagley doesn't draw him sinisterly, where he's like, <laughs> "Oh, <Yeah>. sorry." Mm. <laughs> That'll like, show him. Yeah, no, it's just Brock is kind of a loser. Mm. That's what, but and he can't control his frisbee, and he falls into like bad behavior. Mm. Oh, so it was intentional. Well, it was it. It was a byproduct of him being a loser. I guess it's like a, I'm really reading into the frisbee. Yeah, sure. When I really know. shouldn't be. The point <laughs> is, he accidentally does it, and Peter doesn't see anything nefarious about it, and neither should we. Uh, Moving on. Yes. It's just Peter's, a thing that happened. Yeah, so... Uh, and then May comes in and she's like, Oh, that Frisbee! I always knew that Frisbee! Yeah, no, P- Aunt May does come in and she's like, "That's your fr- like, I don't even remember making this tape. Mm. And so the two of them just kind of like look at their long dead family for a minute. And How long ago was this? Like 10 years? Yeah, about... Which side of the family was Aunt May on? 
You know, I think... Or was it Uncle Ben? Who was related? I think that Uncle Ben was Richard's brother. Okay. I think that's how it worked. Because I remember her saying something like, that wasn't even my family. Ah. You know, like, you... I wanted Ben. Like, (laughs) these people ruined my life (laughs) with their spider offspring. (laughs) She doesn't say that. She loves Peter like a son. Anyway, so we uh, we transition from the tape to like what actually happened, which is what happened on the tape. But we don't. We get to see. We're privy yeah. to like dialogue and back and forth. Sound. And it's not like you know all archived. No, no. It's actually like, there's no tracking involved. It's yeah. just. But uh, we get to see the interaction between Richard and Edward and how they're talking about like this thing they're working on at the lab and how it's going to revolutionize everything. And they're like, can we not talk about work right now? We're having a good time. <laughs> So they do, and blah, blah, blah. So uh, Peter's like, who is this kid that I'm playing with? I don't remember having like any friends growing up. Hmm. And she's like, oh, that's Eddie Brock. And like, he's actually like a couple of years older than you. And he, he, the Brocks died with your parents in the airplane crash that killed Ben. Oh. He's a very different uh, backstory to yeah. the Brocks. Not to Eddie. The little kid saved No, us. I know. But like, that's not huge news. Well, it's, I mean, it's a plane crash. Like, lots yeah. of people die. I thought it was like a small plane. It was a commercial airliner. Oh. Yeah. So, like, a lot of people died. Yeah. But, as did these very specific people. And mm-hmm. we get into conspiracies a little bit in the story. Peter touches on it, but we don't go, like, he doesn't... There's no montage of him figuring it out. <laughs> there's a little bit of a montage where he discovers the, the, the location of Eddie Brock by Googling him. Hmm. And then finding his address and phone number in the white pages, which is exactly how you can reach anybody, which is scary and dangerous even back then, especially now. <laughs> so Peter just calls him because he's at because uh, he's at Empire State University. Like Eddie's in college. Okay. So he calls him up, and they have like a little back and forth, which is like, and Bendis does such a good job just capturing mundane conversations like that awkwardness where you're like hey you don't know me really but you might i'm like your friend from when we were children and don't remember shit and he's like yeah yeah and died together you hit me in the back of the head with a frisbee how i'm gonna get my revenge because i'm spider-man why do i keep telling people so he calls up eddie and he's like holy shit like little peter parker i remember you like i'm at empire state he goes i know i looked you up and he's like oh right that makes sense so he's like we should hang out like you should come out you should college is awesome you should come and see and he's like okay because Peter also, like, you know, he, he he's he's dumped. Yeah. His friend got taken away because of the Osborne thing. Like, Harry's gone or yeah. off the table right yeah. now. He was taken away by S.H.I.E.L.D. He doesn't like them anyway. Nick Fury's a dick. He has no superhero <laughs> friends. Mary Jane is out of the picture. And Gwen is, like, getting settled. And she just lost her dad. So, like, she doesn't need to listen to his fucking baggage. Mm-hmm. So, Peter goes to Empire State University. And it's really cool because... In the real continuity, in the 616 universe, Peter does go to Empire State University. And he, he getting... attends that college. Yeah, he attends yeah. that college. So it's kind of fun to see like a different version of Peter looking at it. Because we never really get to see Peter like wistfully visiting the school as like a, as a 15-year-old. Mm. Being like, look at this place. Like, this is awesome. This is so much better than high school. I will rule here. All of these chicks are hot. And I have not even entered the fucking building yet. So he goes to... Uh, Eddie's dorm he meets Eddie and Eddie is you know he's a douche because he's got a soul patch oh yep (laughs) douche alert (laughs) he doesn't have a tiny uh, ponytail though no he does not both of those Mm. it's 2000 2001 they kind of nixed the ponytail at that point long hair is out the mullet kind of ruined everything so which he had apparently yeah oh yeah everyone did Peter Eddie in the real universe so, uh, oh, I just there was a picture of Eddie. Oh, yes, there. yeah, when he was a kid. Yeah, he did. He had the fucking uh, the Budnick. <laughs> he really loved Terminator 2. Right? Who's Budnick? Google it. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, uh, Eddie's excited to show Pete around. He's going to take him out to a coffee shop because that's what you do. And we meet uh, Eddie's roommate who thinks that Eddie's a total douche. Because he is. Because he is. <laughs> but we get only the surface, so we think the roommate's the douche. Ah. So anyway, uh, Eddie's talking about how, forget high school, like everything that you know about the world is bullshit. You know, you're, you're going to be at college for like six months. You will forget about everything and everybody you knew there. Mm-hmm. It's a complete waste of your time. He's being the typical college kid. who's yeah. just like, I've been living in a dorm for three months. I think I know how the world works. <laughs> 
Well, not only that, but... <laughs> hi. No, we just got reconnected after ten years. Spare me your story about how this is going to change my life. Let's just connect. Well, yeah, exactly. But Brock is... Brock is so excited. They're both excited. Brock is Brock, yeah. he's, a, he's a dick. So, you know, he says, uh, do you have a girlfriend, by the way? Like, by the, I, I've been talking nonstop. Like, let's talk about you. Do you have a girlfriend? He's like, no. You had to mention girlfriends. Like, I did, but it's real bad. And he goes, listen, like, high school's horseshit. Like, that girl, you, you're going to meet a thousand just like her. Oh, sure, you. she's a bitch and you'll upgrade. Show me a picture of her. Big it's, time. Oh, shit, you will never, never do mind. any better. <laughs> What's her number? I'm a creep. No, that's, uh, that does not happen. So he says, like, listen, I made a copy of this tape that I just so found, and it's of our families, and I thought you might like it. And Eddie's, like, so moved by it because no one's ever been nice to him. Hmm. And he's like, you know what? This is the nicest thing anyone's ever done for me. Let me show you something else. And so he takes him to the, like, bio lab at Empire State University, which is, like... Whoa. What? Which is nuts. <laughs> now, listen, Tony Stark... And Reed Richards exist in this universe, and they uh, have donated uh, money and okay. opportunity to this school. Yeah, All right. but is he really smart? Is Eddie Brock really smart? Kind of. Okay, so if he's taking a science class, he would have access to this lab. He actually works in the lab with Dr. Connors oh. on okay. a very special project that he's going to show him. And he shows him this like beaker full of black goo. Yeah. And Peter says, what is it? And he says, it's our inheritance. And he went, goes on to explain that the black goo is a suit that Eddie and Peter's fathers were working on right before they died. And supposedly, it was, it was a suit that you put someone who was dying of a horrible disease. Mm -hmm. And, and it would keep them alive. It would actually, like, go in and yeah. bore out the, the root of the problem. Mm -hmm. It was okay. supposed to be the cure for cancer. It goes in and it it, it just it eliminates the disease. Right. It finds it and it kills it. Yeah. Is it alive? It, you mean like is it sentient? Yeah. <sighs> they don't think so. Like they don't go. They don't, they do not postulate on that topic. Ah, okay. Yeah. It was not designed to be sentient. No. It was not designed to be a thinking. Nor did it fall from the sky. Right. No, it was created. Yes. It was made in a lab as a. As a cure for cancer. As a thing that would like flow over you mm -hmm. and d d somehow detect and eliminate cancer. Yes. Okay. Pain, no, so, um, another major creature. change. Right. Okay. Instead of being bitten by a radioactive spider, Peter's genetic. Instead yep. of venom falling from the sky or being an alien. Yes. It's made. just created in the lab. Exactly. Right? It's all science. Yes. Everything in the un in the Ultimate Universe is like science-based except for the aliens. But, uh, <laughs> but Venom is... This is, a, this is a true departure from the origin. It's why, like... Whenever anybody talks about when they're going to make a Venom movie, and now that they are, uh, but like, just use the Ultimate Origin. Right. Just it was a cancer suit that went crazy. Yeah. Like, you don't need to make it an alien, but I think most people are like, but the aliens what makes it fun. Mm -hmm. Like that's the cool part. Yeah. And I get that. So, in in Ultimate Spider-Man, I think it really works because it's like we've seen that though. We've seen the alien. Yeah. Let's do something else, and I think it really, really works. The decision to ground it in. Everything that makes Ultimate Spider-Man what it is. Like you said, like it is a science-based thing. Mm -hmm. And so the suit should reflect all the other stuff that like Spider-Man's villains and rogues come from. So anyway... Uh, Brock... Then it's less, also less of a deus ex machina. Well, it's less like... Out of fucking left field. Yeah. Like it's like, yeah, what? Oh, we found this thing. Is totally yeah. Random. Yeah, we it's... found this alien. We have to explain that shit. We got to explain yeah. aliens and crap. Like, no, no. It's just, it's a, it's a thing we invented. And it does this. And Brock kind of thinks, and Peter elaborates on that, that uh, basically Richard and Eddie were working on this suit and they were subsidized by the Roxxon Corporation, which is always synonymous with evil and corruption. It's mm -hmm. like, a, it's, it was Exxon, you know, back in the, when it was created, but uh -huh. it's also like, uh, Roxxon is always just like, oh, those greedy, le like, you know, yeah. we'll do whatever we can to yep. get money. Yep. 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 And, yeah. and they'll like work with villains or whatever, they, they, and they can never be caught because they're like, they're a slippery corporation. Captain America can't punch it in the face. Right. right? Yeah. But anyway, and they're everywhere. The, yeah, they're and they're Asian. everywhere. Yeah, they're not Hydra. It's just, <laughs> okay, you know, they're just it's just that they're they're like they're as evil as any evil actual corporation <laughs> that does like shady shit to right. make more money and to like up, like to re re find a return on their bottom line. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and like, so. Are they specifically involved in like pharmaceuticals? Yes. Okay. In science yeah. and stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they're not an energy corporation. No. But they are well, maybe they are, but they all they they, they have the well, another branch. Of, yeah, sure. that, there's a branch yeah. that does this. Okay, and they so, could be anything. Do right. they talk about what their products are? No, because I feel like in a lot of comic books, yeah. the evil corporations, it's very unclear. Like, what do they make? But what do you sell, though? Yeah, how do you make your uh, money? Where does your money come from? Bubblegum. Yeah, we're bubblegum uh, factory. You wouldn't believe it, but uh, yeah. Uh, okay, like that would be something. <laughs> That's the <laughs> answer, that, but, but like yeah. yeah. Well, no, because Roxxon, I think it was like a petroleum company. Okay. Or in the in the other universe, the I don't universe. know. In this one, they get your rocks off with rocks on ro- <laughs> rocks. rocks. <laughs> yeah, they make candy. Uh, they make colorful Space candy. candy. It's uh, all high fructose corn syrup. It's yeah, petroleum derived candy. Yeah, <laughs> it's like margarine. So uh, anyway, there they Brock has the notes that his father kept, uh-huh. and he's like reading them, and the notes basically say like you know. They're going to take away our invention. They're going to take it all away from us. And, like, I'm going to fight it. Like, we got to do something. Like, we should never have signed on with Roxxon in the first place. Like, Richard wanted to keep his inventions to themselves. And Brock sure. wanted to sell because he wanted to make money. And so Richard advised against it. Brock kind of, like, strong-armed him into it. So they did make their deal with Roxxon. And now Roxxon's trying to, like, take what they have and kick them out of it. Hmm. Well, that's probably why Roxxon funded them. Yeah. So that they could take the thing that they made and, like, make money on it. Right. It's usually why companies But the problem is invest. the Roxxon Corporation saw the suit as, like, possibly like a, a weapon. military weapon. Yeah. yeah so. Yep. And that's like, that's not what I did this for. I did this to help people, not to hurt people. Yeah, but it's a weapon, though. It's a weapon. <laughs> I'm gonna... very hesitant to call it a weapon. <laughs> We're going to... Cure people from cancer is a weapon. Yeah. yeah. No, it would all... Like, maybe we could put it on, like, soldiers and it'll cure them of being shot and then they'll... You know, oh. Who knows? I don't know that what the sense. military applications are of the suit. Well, we're going to find out, well, right? Because we do, because it becomes venom, for God's sake. But, well, like, they don't Roxxon know. know that... They don't. Okay. Anyway, so... Uh, What's this? It's a thumbtack. All right, how can we turn it into a weapon? Yeah. You can't? <laughs> right? I mean, like, you could... Cover... No, we'll find a way, though. All right. Maybe there'll be crazy side effects. <laughs> yeah, but you'll never take it away from me. So anyway, they uh, they so Peter basically thinks. Oh, so like two days before Brock wrote that journal, he died. Mm. And Peter's like, oh, so the Roxxon Corporation killed our parents, right? And Eddie's like, I never put that together, but like, damn, that would be really fucked up if that happened. Yeah. And so he's like, so this is all that's left? Is this like prototype suit that like wasn't finished? And he's like, yeah. Well, let's finish. Well, it. Why didn't the Roxxon Corporation use it if they killed them to to obtain it? Obtain it. They must have hid it from them or something. Oh, well, how did fucking Eddie Brock get it? Because uh, Eddie's the the notes told Eddie where they were. Oh, okay. But uh, so Eddie takes the suit, or so he has this this thing, and he's been working on it with Doctor Connors, who is a lizard man and an alcoholic. <laughs> so he's like the least that order. helpful person. To right. be working on this, he's like a shitty failed super scientist. Yeah, but he and this shitty failed science student are gonna make this cure for cancer suit. Like, no. Uh, yeesh, oof. All right, but <laughs> there, it cures cancer, but it can't differentiate between cancer and healthy cells, right? so it just kills everything. Yeah, exactly. But the, so, yeah, but it does kill cancer though. <laughs> technically, <laughs> so, so the, does bleach. But the suit don't put it in your body though. The, the the suit is also like tailored to the d- genetic structure of whoever is supposed to receive the suit. So like basically we would make a suit for whoever would oh. have the need for this. And so the DNA that is bound to this suit was derived from Richard Parker. Okay. So, you know, just keeping that in mind. Hmm. Okay. So it, it wouldn't work on like Eddie because Eddie's not Richard Parker right. or derived from his genetics. Okay. So then, uh, anyway, so Peter's like excited about this. He goes home. He goes back to school, and he's hanging out with uh, with Gwen, and they're chatting. And of course, they see Mary Jane, and she's hanging out with her friends, her girlfriends, and they're all like talking about him and looking at him. And she's like, yep. and Gwen's like, "Don't look at them." Yeah. And he's like, "Maybe I should go over there and explain myself." And she's like, "That's the worst thing you could do." Yeah. I have a better idea. Kiss me now. Yeah. Right. 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 She should, and she doesn't, and it's cool. <laughs> But she's like, don't. She goes, she broke up with you. Let her come to you if you think that you need to talk. Mm. Then Eddie rolls up in a convertible. And he's like, hey, Pete, come on. And so Pete's like, 
okay. And uh, so Pete and Gwen go up to this like college kid in his Corvette, uh, which of course like blows the mind of Mary Jane and her friends, which nice. is like, lol. Like if you are not sympathetic to Mary Jane, you're like, yeah. <laughs> or if you like have been in this situation, you're like, yes. So anyway, and no, Mary I'm gonna go hang like, out with my older cool friends. Yeah, uh, I'm above this high school crap. Now. We've been broken up for maybe a day and a half, and I've already upgraded. Yep. I'm with the person you are insanely jealous of, and I have new cool friends who are way out of the out, out of high school. But it's a two seat convertible. That's how cool again, uh, Gwen. Uh, sit on my lap. Yes. <laughs> Which is what yep. happens. Yeah, and that's nice. And it's funny because Gwen gets on his lap and she's like, "Holy crap, you are all muscle." And he's like, "Oh yeah, I do Pilates or whatever." <laughs> So then they leave. I do calisthenics. Yes. And I, I shovel the walk a lot. <laughs> One, two. <three. laughs> so uh, so they, they drive off. Of course, like, Liz Allen is like, don't worry about him. Peter sucks. Like, he's not special. And she's like, no, he is. And she's like, name one thing that Peter does well. And she, like, looks at him like... And he, she's like, you know what? Gross. <laughs> leave. It's like, no, he's Spider-Man anyway. Yeah. So they go to the mall and they're hanging out at the food court and Eddie's doing his college spiel uh-huh. and he's talking about like how frats suck and he goes like, name the worst person in your school. And they're like, Flash Thompson. And he goes, imagine a building full of Flash Thompsons. That is what a frat is. <laughs> and, it wouldn't let me in. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, he gets a call on his cell phone and he's are they skipping school right now? What is happening? No, all the students go to the mall after school. Oh, it's after school. Yes, yeah, school okay. gets school gets out. Ah, I see. So, Which is also why Mary Jane was uh, seeing him outside. Yes, it's ah, why they were all. Like, I thought on the that front I was deck. picturing the beginning of the school day. Oh yeah, no, no, that's the end of the school. Yeah. No, they leave and like that would be even cooler. But Peter's not going to do that. No, yeah. uh, well, Peter does skip school a lot, but it's to be Spider Man or make out with Mary Jane. Uh, so <laughs> and one of those things is off the table. Yes. I'm here to be Spider-Man and make out with Mary Jane. And I'm all out of Mary Jane. <laughs> you know what? That doesn't work. Doesn't feel... Are you, t- are, you t- are you talking about pot? I'm very confused now. Yeah, no. No, there's just, actually a girl named Mary just Jane. Just stop robbing the store, whip. Yeah, anyway, God, I gotta go. Damn it. Stupid, stupid. <laughs> so, but no, uh, we, we get an indication that it's the end of school because they leave. And as they're leaving, Gwen says, Well, Henrik Ibsen can kiss my butt. Like, it's just like, I'm done listening about fucking boring Russian authors. I'm like, <laughs> fair point. Ibsen yeah. is boring. So, anyway, they're talking about how uh, they're they're hanging out. And, you know, Gwen is like, I'm not really into college. I think it's all hype. Everybody needs to go to college. Like, I'm usually against whatever everybody else yeah, is doing. Yeah, for, yeah. And she's a contrarian. Yes. Eddie's like, oh, so anyway, I'm going to go to this reggae concert. Because cause I'm... Yeah. I'm a dude. <sighs> I mean, like, listen. <laughs> At least he doesn't wear a Rasta hat and like <laughs> look like a complete poser. At least he doesn't have like white dreadlocks. No. Oh man. No, he does not. Because he's got blonde hair. Like that is a bad look, man. It's a bad look. We're alienating so many members of our audience. You know that. Like so many reggae listening, dreadlock having, look, dumped. Have dreadlocks. That's fine. But the only person that has blonde dreadlocks that looked good was Angelina Jolie in Gone in Sixty Seconds. Well, that was what? A good pull. Also, no. she's a woman and looks like Angelina Jolie. Yeah. Yeah. So she's got a lot going she for her already. She looks okay in spite of those horrible dreadlocks. Right. I disagree. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> so, moving on. So, uh, anyway, Eddie's going to go to this reggae concert. And he's like, uh, and, and Gwen's like, oh, man, I love reggae. And he's like, well, we should go. And Pete's like, I have to go. I can't go out to concert. Like, I can hang out at the mall, but yeah. I can't, like, hang out at all hours of the night. Like, I got schoolwork to do, and I'm also, like, Spider-Man and shit. And so, uh... And they're like, what? Yes. No. He doesn't say that. But, uh, but Eddie's like, well, do you want to go? And she's like, totally! And you're like, oh, no. And then Peter's like, anyway, this is boring. Do we want to talk about how my parents were killed? And Eddie's like, dude, you're bringing down the room, man. <laughs> dude, my chances. Come on. Yeah, dude, come on. drop it. Dude, so... Up. Peter finds like a bunch of other old tapes of his father talking about the suit. Like once he gets into there, he finds like uh-huh. everything. And yeah. his father's like given this thing where he's just talking about how he f- can't finish the suit and it's, it's it's dogging him and blah blah blah. And he like has this really sinking suspicion that something's gonna get him. And but at the same blah. time, he's constantly smiling. Smiling. He's the same fucking. Smile well, no, these are different face. tapes. Like he, yeah. the, this is the tape where he's like, "This is gonna be great." Yeah. Like it's actually a, de- a de-evolution of. Oh, his, you're watching as it's like this is all coming apart. Yeah. yeah. And then like, he's got a five o'clock. Shadow was fifty-seven, like he's got this fucking beer. Yeah, he's yeah, got the he's yeah. got the five o'clock shadow. He's like, he's like, I can't, I can't he's do like, it. He's like, Ben, you were right. Like, never trust anyone wearing a tie. That's like the line. 
And I'm like, everybody wears ties. It's such an insane yeah, thing what? to say, but whatever. Unless so then, it's a bow tie. Yeah, because those are things that are fun, and Bill Nye wears one. So uh, Spider-Man, like, or Peter Parker's like, he's so incensed by like looking at his father at like his lowest moment and mm. knowing that he's going to be killed like a couple days later. Yeah. He's like, fuck this. I'm going to go, I'm going to fix this. I'm going to finish my father's work. So he dresses up as Spider-Man, breaks into the lab. Nice. And uh, this is all punctuated by like the reggae concert. And you see Gwen and Eddie and they're like at the concert and they're rocking out while Peter's like breaking into a lab and stealing someone else's shit. Uh And he's like, I'm not going to take the whole thing. I'm just going to take a sample. So he takes the sample and as he's taking the sample, it gets onto him. It grabs to his body and he gets covered in this suit. But it doesn't. He doesn't go like voila, I'm Spider Man. He becomes this giant, bubbly black mass, Ugh. and what? It like encases him in it because it's fucking not finished. It's just right. a mess. Just... But he he gets like absorbed by it, and then it creates this cool like kind of like I don't know hard exterior around it, and then he blasts out of it, and he's got the like suit on. Like a cocoon on. in a way. Yeah. And when he blasts out, he can't see. And when he says he can't see, like, eyes manifest on the suit. Uh. So it's like it's responding to his mental commands the way the symbiote used to. But it's responding to his mental commands because, A, it's similar to his DNA. So it should work for him. And, you know, because it was his father's, like, suit. Yeah. And it was, men- it was built kind of out of his genetic structure. So, like, okay. it will listen to him. It will kind of, like, work better than it would if on, like, anyone. Okay. And also, it's like this, it's this magic suit that does fucking anything, so who the hell knows? Right. So then, and then he becomes, like, black suit Spider-Man. And also cures him of his spider powers. It, right? <laughs> that'd be freaking, that'd be insane. No, I need the suit. Oh, no. Yeah. So then we get to see, like, black costume Spider-Man breaking out and doing some cool shit. Okay. And for whatever reason, at, like, 7 o'clock in the morning, this girl is, this, this pop star is leaving a concert. We know it's, like, 7 o'clock in the morning because... He bumps into the school bus of his class, like, going to school. And I'm like, your times are all messed up, guys. Yeah. But in any case, whatever. forget about that. This, uh, you know, this pop star is, like, leaving. Maybe it's a hotel. Maybe it's not even a concert. Could Maybe be anything. leaving her hotel. Yeah, there's and there's paparazzi. Yeah. But there's, well, there's also fans. Ah. And they're like, we love you. And she's like, I love you, too. I love you all. And then she gets into her limo and she goes, get me out of this disgusting, horrible vomitorium of a city. <laughs> And then she turns and she sees that all of her guards are kidnapped by, like, the Foot Clan. The Foot Clan. <laughs> or Hydra Apparently. agents yeah, or whatever. Yeah. They, they, those are, no, those are super fans. Right? These are, yeah. The, yeah. But they're, or, they're bad yeah, guys. Punk. The fact is that they're... <laughs> okay, if anyone, that's uh, Snake Eyes. Right? Or Snake Eyes. Yeah. yeah. They're bad guys. Mm. They're going to kidnap her and ransom her for money. They're very well coordinated and they have, like connections sure oh god they're it's the umbrella corporation just kind of like, and also the umbrella corporation. it's just an umbrella <laughs> it's a very specific very yeah. specifically colored umbrella right anyway so they're they're about to get away and then spider-man shows up right and he like wrecks the limo he just rips the top of the limo open that's awesome. i love it he hops in he goes wow a limo it must be prom season and he sits in the limo and he goes prom season limo nobody <laughs> really hmm. tough limo and then uh he gets shot and the suit absorbs the bullet and then heals him. Yeah. And he's like, oh, this is awesome. And so he, like, he beats up all the dudes in the limo. And he's like, but, you know, the driver of the limo, like, was taken over by one of the bad guys. So he, like, starts... Anyway, a high-speed chase sure, yeah. ensues. Right, Where right. Spider-Man has to, like, stop the car from careening out of control. So he's, like, got to maneuver around mm-hmm. this dude. He's, like, kicking people with his feet while he's driving the car. Exactly. Yeah. Like Deadpool in the Deadpool movie. Yeah. But uh, he and he's also 15, so he has no idea how to drive, and he's in New York, so he, he doubly it's a nightmare. Screwed. Yeah, so he's hitting everything, as other than his spider powers are stopping him from doing. Right, exactly. But he's he's driving. It's great because the pop star is like screaming in the back, and he uses his suit because he doesn't need web shooters anymore because mm-hmm. the suit's doing all the work for him, it's, right. which is interesting. Yeah, but he knows yeah. how. Right. Uh, well, yeah, the suit's like responding to his mind, to his mind, just like the suit did in this in the original universe. Like the suit produced organic webbing. Now the suit's producing like just parts of itself. Um, but anyway, she's screaming and he like, we- he like webs her mouth shut and oh. he goes, I'm sorry. It- I have a little headache from you. <laughs> uh, c- c- could you just maybe shut up for like five seconds? Exactly. <laughs> I, just, I love that little moment, but anyway, he stops. And it doesn't encase her and then like. Make her a into a. Over her body. No. Or, or just like cover her. Right? No. That'd be horrible. It just, it just covers her mouth. So then, uh, he stops the limo, he saves the day and then he leaves. Okay. And he's thinking like, how awesome is this? Then he bumps into Herman the Shocker, because he does that. Yep. And 
Shocker's like kicking the crap out of these cops and he's robbing this bank and he's going to get away and then Black Suit Spider-Man shows up. Ah, uh, like, Herman. Yeah, and he goes, hey, Herman. And he's like, no! And he blasts him with the vibro blades or whatever. He's shooting him with the with the Shocker blasters. Mm-hmm. And it just like, it just like vibrates him a little bit and he's like, that was quite refreshing. Thank mm-hmm. you. Then he kicks his ass and he leaves. All right. And uh, so then... He's like, he's, he's checking all the boxes. He's like, I stopped a supervillain. I stopped like a supervillain organization. Now what's next? A uh, dude robs a convenience store and kills the convenience store owner. Oh, shit. And the convenience store owner's like wife is just squealing about her dead husband. And she's like, he went that way. And so he just hauls ass towards him. And when and he catches him, he eats him like a scroll. Right? Well, he, he's... It's echoing his experience as, like... Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben. Of course. Mm-hmm. He follows him into an abandoned warehouse. He gets oh, into the shit. warehouse. He And it's like... The panel should parallel kind of like how he caught the first burglar. Yeah. And he even says the line. He says, like, there's nowhere on earth that you can hide from me. And as he's looking at him, he's having flashbacks to his Uncle Ben. Because remember, this is all happening kind of, like, in real time. So, like, mm. Volume 6 may have come out, like... 30 or 30 or 40 months after the first issue this is like three weeks yeah uncle ben just died right so he is freaking out and he's like you killed my uncle ben and he's like i didn't, I didn't kill your uncle ben man oh, oh and then crap. he just, it, the suit morphs into venom and he tries to eat him oh shit he is a scroll oh i knew it God, you can see his fucking face inside venom yeah inside venom's like, like freaking wow. agape mouth and he's just like, I want to hear you scream. I want your blood. And oh, then he's so like, it's like his id. Yeah. And so he's I'm like, I'm going to eat your brain. Yeah, I'm going to eat your brain. So he throws him away. And he's like, oh, shit. And so he's trying to tear himself off of the suit. Right. And the suit's got this horrible venom mask, like mouth coming out of his head. And Ugh. it's like, Rah! So as he escapes, like a lightning storm uh, emerges. And he's trying to like extricate himself from the suit. And he's like having a flashback to like the last like three weeks of his life. Right. We're like going through all this trauma and shit. And the suit's just like sucking him down. Yeah. And ultimately he like climbs onto a roof. He, he's making his way through town. And he lands on some power he's lines. making his way downtown. <laughs> you had that thought too? <laughs> Damn it. He's making his way downtown. And uh, in he, a suit. Trying to eat him. Or someone else. <laughs> and he's so bound so he hits these power lines and the electricity burns the suit off of him. Oh, wait. And that's So it. it's not like a lightning storm and the lightning hits him. He just no, I was going to say, there's a lightning the storm, but then he touches power lines and that shocks him. Yes. Well, what's the point of the lightning Wouldn't storm? Wouldn't it be kind of convenient for a lightning bolt to hit him? Or, or is... Uh, it's just supposed to be moody and atmospheric. Uh, interesting question. I'll I will tell now, you if it's an interesting question. <laughs> no, it's an interesting question. Fuck you. That. So he gets shot by the guy in the car. Yeah, and it and he uh, runs into power lines. Is mm-hmm. he, are his spider powers while he's in the suit, or is a uh, spider sense sort like, of like kind of deafened because yeah, because like, how did yeah. he not sense that bullet was going to hit him? Or the power? I lines. think it was more like it was. I think the, like the, if he hadn't had the suit, he would have fucking died. No, he no, he would have died. He been shot in the shoulder by yeah. the. But here's the thing: I think that it's not that his spider sense isn't working. Although that would be interesting because it would parallel six sixteen. The suit doesn't work on him, but the suit doesn't work on him. Because it was, like, almost bonded to him. So, like, it was not perceived as a threat biologically because of, you know, his connection to it. Because the suit's like, no, you'll survive. Well, and the suit is also like, well, maybe, but I think it's more like he was in close quarters. And he couldn't dodge it. Oh. Like, danger was coming from all directions. And so him getting shot was, like, the most pressing, but he didn't have time to So he was just reckless. Yes. And in this case... I mean, he's being eaten by a suit. He's... Dangers in this case, him. he can't even fathom that like he's he's getting in trouble. Right? I would love it though if it was just like no, the suits the suit doesn't work on you, or a suit like the blocks, suit your, blocks your, your, sense. Your, your spider sense. That'd be, that'd be neat. In any case, it burns the suit off of him, and he was kind of like almost like sleepwalking. He wound up going to the grave of his parents and Uncle Ben. I see. And so he comes apart like there. Is this what is what that's is like this? the suit kind of like that's the smoke of the oh. remnants of the suit like tendrilling off. Of yeah. It's also so a way for me totally don't naked. see his butt. Yeah. yeah. There's, a, there's a book for children, even. Yeah. So I, Aren't all comics? Aren't they? <laughs> well, let's find out. So Gwen is in a dorm room alone with this college kid. Oh. And uh, he starts giving her the spiel about like how college, how you'll forget all the high school people. Uh-huh. And she starts like like smiling to herself. And he's like, what? And she's like, you told this to Peter already. I heard all about it. Is that, all, is that, like, your, is that like your thing? Is that like what you do? She's like, is that your shtick? And he's like, maybe. And then he leans you, in for a do kiss. Do you like it? Yeah. Is it working? And he leans in for a kiss. She's like, 
I'm in high school, man. Ah, uh, yeah. And he's like, <laughs> you you went to the reggae concert with me. And she's like, that's not a reason to put out? <laughs> and he's like, you know what? Like, what a tease. Like, that you're, you're all the same. And he's like, she's like, right on. Cool. Sure. And then she leaves. <laughs> Then, uh, and he's all like, Bleh. yeah. So Eddie turns on the TV. He sees Black Suit Spider Man, like kicking ass and taking uh, names. And he's like, son of a bitch. So he goes to the lab to see if the suit's still there. Uh huh. When he gets there, Peter is wearing like homeless people clothes and he's in the lab already and he's taking the suit. And he's like, what the fuck? And then he looks on the wall and he sees like the footprints like on the wall from uh-huh. the skylight. And he's like, you're Spider Man. Oh. Yeah. And, uh, and, and Peter's like, listen, this thing is unstable. <laughs> if, if it were, if you put it on you, like if you have any kind of it's like strong emotions, it will mm-hmm. react to that. And it's dangerous. We have to get rid of it. It doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't cure sure cancer. Eddie Brock is like, oh yeah, totally. We have to get rid of it. Look. Oh yeah. Oh no, he's totally on board. <laughs> and, and then he becomes like Spider-Man Jr. And they, they fight clown together. <laughs> oh, that's, no. that's amazing. Yeah. No. <laughs> that's an entire, but here's the thing. Like, yeah, it doesn't work, but. It's also the legacy that your dad mm. and Eddie's dad yeah. left you. But yeah. maybe you should just correct it. N- no, yeah. no, neither of them. No, underst- I think I think this guy will totally understand if I explain. If I just rationally explain to him, that's that, the that, thing. Like, about- I, 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 look, I took it. I stole it. Well, he and took. I, here, he took a thing. piece of well, it. He didn't take the I, whole thing. Yeah, I I took a piece of it. I used the knowledge you gave me. Yes. Of the secret thing. Yeah. That my, I, that my dad also invented though. Well, and I learned a lesson about it. And now you just just trust me. Yeah, it's dangerous, and it's and we can't mess with it, and it just put it away, yeah. and, and and never touch it, and uh, just forget it. Yeah. Oh no, he's yeah, like, we need to destroy it. Oh, destroy it! Oh, we need to destroy it. Yeah. We need to erase, erase oh, yeah. it from existence. No. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I think Peter's also overreacting. He, well, he obviously he's yeah. the most but then overreacting. Again, yeah. But then again, he did have a horrific experience. Yeah. Where well, he suit lived, tried it. to eat it. Yeah. What he yeah. needs to do is be like, so the suit makes you turn into a giant monster. Right. And, and, and he's like, cool. Yeah. And here's the thing: it can be weaponized. Yeah. Like, it will be the exact opposite of what our parents' legacy wanted to be. Sure. So, like, for that reason, we should not do... He, obviously, he doesn't do any of those things. He right. just says, like, we need to destroy... He tries to articulate it, but he's 15 and yeah. stupid. Yeah. Yep. He is that. <laughs> so, Peter explains to him who he is. At least he, he got pants. Yes. Yeah. So, he explains to him, like, who he is, where it comes from, like, how he got the powers, all that shit. And he's just like, this thing is dangerous and it will destroy everything and like i know too many powerful people who want this mm-hmm. like what if wilson fisk gets it what right. if norman osborne finds that exists what if like and shield like, takes it like well he doesn't say those things i'm no, just saying like right. there's powerful problems out there that like you don't even get right like you don't even know how much of a problem this will be for me if you keep this on the dude that you're working with is the lizard <laughs> you're with a with a human lizard creature well, he's not that anymore, but he's no. become that. Well, he was I'm that. sorry, what? Yeah. yeah. I Wait, think does, I would know if I was well, working for Peter a lizard. Brock know he was the lizard? No. no. Oh, no. Peter saves Kurt. And then, like, he goes, like, you're cured. Like, leave it. Don't, never do this again. I'll keep right. it. I'll keep your secret. Oh, uh, okay. Does he tell Eddie Brock? No. Oh, interesting. No. This would be the golden... Because he kept oh, his agree. secret. Yeah, because he's being uh, that's cool. That's true. Yeah. So he says, like, I'm sorry we have to destroy it. And he says, like, do you get it? Like, do you understand what I'm talking about? Right. And then he's like, yeah, I get it. And he's like, do you do you believe, do you agree with me? And he's like, yes. And he's like, no one knows that I'm Spider-Man except my ex-girlfriend. Aunt May doesn't know. Gwen doesn't know. Nobody knows. I'm trusting you with this secret mm-hmm. because of our family connection. Right. I'm telling you this. That's like our, I'm going to destroy our father's legacy, but you get to know I'm Spider-Man. Like, that's the, that's the trade-off. <laughs> but what about my inheritance? Right? And he's just like, this is, you know what? Like... This is crazy. Like, all right, I, I agree with you, but I gotta digest this. So mm-hmm. Peter takes the suit and he leaves. Okay. And he's and he throws it into a smokestack, a la the clone saga. Huh. Okay. And he destroys it. Hey, smokestacks cure everything, right? Yep. Just throw all your problems into a smokestack. Yeah. That's the last it, it's not wrong. Uh, except all the problems always <laughs> come they back. Always come back. And they always make it worse because the clone saga was the worst. So. Pete chucks the clothes. He gets home. He chucks the homeless people clothes he stole, and then he's like. He runs into Gwen and he's like, "Is Aunt May home?" And she's like, "Nah, she's at some PTA thing." He goes, "Hey, how was uh, how was your time with Pete, with Eddie?" And he's she's like, "Eddie is a bad person, Peter. Mm. I'm sorry. He made a pass at me." And he's like, "Well, did you like? Did you? I mean, like, well, you went to a concert, right?" With him. No, she's he's like, "Did you lead him on?" She's like, "Please, 
Like, don't be a dude. Right. And he's like, right on, I'm sorry. Like, she goes, I'm sorry that you're, like, little friend from from childhood. Like, you know, I know that he's, like, your new project or whatever, but, like, <laughs> but like he's a bad guy. Mm-hmm. Which I like because it's also meta, like, he's the bad guy. Right. He's the bad guy. Of the world. Uh, but she says, like, I told him that, like, my dad had just died. Mm. And he still tried to bang me in his dorm. Like, that's not a good person, Peter. Mm. And so then we show what happened, like, 45 minutes ago. And, uh... Peter leaves and Eddie's like fucking mutants and they're bullshit and they're like steal oh boy. steal from me. Yeah. If you were if you weren't a fucking idiot high school kid, you'd know that you always make backups of your experiments and he pulls out the fucking other suit. Uh-huh. And he goes like, "Well, if he became Spider-Man, and he puts it on." Okay. And uh Peter's having horrible PTSD dreams of being Venom and almost eating this dude. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so he wakes up and he just goes to Mary Jane's house. He's like, fuck it, I need to talk to Mary Jane. Oh, wow. So he wakes her up. Just totally inappropriate. Yeah. Well, it's she meet, high school. Yeah. She meets him in the garage and they're talking. Does he have a boombox? Right? <laughs> it's raining. It would ruin the No, he's just day. trying to talk. He's not trying to win her back. <laughs> yes, he just wants to talk to her. But he is desperate and he is like, do you miss me? Because, of course. Right. You have an eyelash. You're just trying to touch my face. So, no. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, but he's like, she's like, I saw that you had like a black costume. Did you make a new costume? He's like, it wasn't, it wasn't for me. It was wrong. It was wrong. It was a wrong look. Mm-hmm. She's like, yeah, like, it was scary. And he's like, so what's going on? He's like, I don't know. I just like, I miss you and I need you. I'm like, can we be together? And she's like, no. She's like, no. <laughs> Uh, did you stop being Spider-Man? Right. And he's like, listen, like, I, I went through some shit. Like, I almost killed somebody. And, like, I don't, I don't know who to talk to or who to be with. Like, he just has this whole, like, real yeah. unloading of his emotions, which is exactly why she broke up with him in the first place. Right. And he's just like, I'm in love with you. And I'm never going to not be. And I'm sorry. And she's like, well, this is not normal. The things you're telling me, this mm. life, these are not normal things. And that's what I want. I'm sorry. Didn't they only date for, like... A couple of weeks. They grew up together too. Like they they've known each other forever. Like yeah. they were friends first. Yeah. And he realized that he's in love with her. He's also fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. thinks they're gonna, gonna be together forever. Gonna, yeah. Romeo yeah. and Juliet were fourteen and thirteen. <laughs> and they were like, I gotta kill myself. They're, they're also fake. <laughs> yeah, but they're yeah, but, like, but there like, were universal truths underneath that. Yeah. yeah. Teenagers yeah. will take their emotions, particularly love, and ratchet them to 14. Uh, so anyway, the cleaning lady goes in to where Eddie put on the suit, and she's just like walking in, and she finds Eddie in this fucking goop. The cocoon. And he's like, I'm cold and I'm hungry. And she's like, Are you okay? And then it just pulls her in and, and eats she her. She gets eaten. <sighs> Wait, why is it venomish? Because it's because Eddie's mostly misery and anger. And also, this isn't tuned to his genetic structure. This is just a mess. Yeah, no, I get that. But why does it have the same, like, fangs and weird tongue and shit? That's what it does. That's just what it is. That's just what it is. That's yeah, what it does. It just makes yeah. a big, long tongue and big-ass fangs. Yeah. Okay, That's so... That's how it manifests, like, anger and misery and rage. And it's not like it pulled that off of Spider-Man. Totally different thing. No. Yeah, no. Maybe okay. the eyes, because it has like the venom eyes, right? He that does looks like the Spider Man. He does eyes. see the suit on TV. Maybe he was inspired by that, because yeah. you do see that. But yeah. he doesn't get the spider. Right, right. But that's because, and there's actually, well, we'll talk about right. that. But uh, anyway, so he he manages to pull himself together. So when Venom eats her, right? Like, where does she go in relation to Eddie Brock's body? My guess like, is does Eddie Brock eat her. Yeah, my guess is that the suit like bites her down and grinds her into like pulp into pulp and then it pushes the the material into him the way that like the suit would pull a tumor out of you oh you know it, it does the inverse of what the suit should do when it like is curing you of disease yeah but it's right. like intravenously like, feeds him it's like mm. giving him nutrients yes because and the suit in here connected anyway so like it's also feeding itself who mm. knows Gross. Right. We don't really get a full explanation, <laughs> but he he says like, he, but he he pulls it all together and he's like, okay, if Peter could do this, I can do this, like, and he's just and, and we see like, <laughs> oh god, I've immediately hit somebody. Yeah. It's... Oh, he doesn't even he 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 
comes to that conclusion kind of where he's like where's the cleaning lady like what's happening you know oh, and we see like his his mental process and it's just all over the place it's random scattershot thoughts and feelings and yeah. stuff and it's messing with his head yeah and it's a pretty cool uh, demonstration of, of insanity where mm. he's like obsessed with spider-man and peter and how like peter took this from me peter fucking made me do this and i'm angry being and sick and pissed because of peter then he finally like gets it together and he gets the he gets the venom look yeah then like some security officers show up and he becomes more venom yeah <laughs> And it's interesting. So this suit of this this look of venom, where it's like teeth yeah. are coming out of his shoulders, yeah. and tendrils are already coming out and shit. This is what what Bagley's always wanted to draw. Okay. When Bagley came up with the design for Carnage, he wanted him to be like all goopy and have like tendrils and shit all over the place. Sure. He wanted him to look like he was constantly in motion, and they were like, make him look like Red Venom because that's what sells. And he's like, fine. Damn. But, like, you got a couple of tendrils going. Yeah. As opposed to Venom, who's always streamlined. Yeah. We're seeing kind of, like, the manifestation of Bagley's desire to get, like, that motion out there. Okay. So Venom is... We, here's Venom. Like, here's here's the first iteration of Venom. Yeah. That's the last time you'll see him look like that again. After that, he's, it's like, like, Carnage Venom. Yes, he is yeah. Bagley Venom. Where well, he's, he's a monster. He's always moving. He's always huge. And he looks like a yeah. fucking, like, mon- like, a big thing, like, made of four legs. Yeah, he's a monster. So... Yeah, he was turning into a monster, though. It's true. So Peter's in school, wait, uh, sitting in class, listening to boring bullshit, uh-huh. and he looks out the window. It sets off a spider sense. Uh-huh. So he looks outside and he sees this fucking <laughs> venom monster, and he's like, "Damn it! I gotta go deal with this." Yep, it's gotta be Eddie. So May he, I go to the bathroom? He doesn't even bother. Just <laughs> I get a small pass, please. Yeah. So he leaves and he goes outside. Gets <laughs> out of the middle of class. Mr. Parker, out. yeah. Mr. Parker, we are not through here. <laughs> yeah. They he he does it so often the teacher doesn't even fucking acknowledge it. He's just, he's just a troublesome student now. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to write you off. So he, he faces Venom in this cool, like, rain-soaked scene. That's cool. He fights Venom. And that's how the book ends. He just fights Venom. Okay. And it's cool. But, but he, he doesn't have his, like, talking, his right? or, or is No. This, what? They're talking. Or is this just, like... No, this is a, the ongoing narration of Richard Parker's, like, recording. The, okay. the, his final video. Uh. Where he's just, like... I, this isn't what I wanted. I wanted to defeat cancer, and instead right. I may have made something worse. The cancer. Yeah. That's rough. Yeah. Oh my god, the fact that he's shooting out tendrils and they have teeth on them is it really yeah, horrifying. Yeah, it's really cool. Horrifying. I love it. Yeah. So he just fights them. So they hit this electrical wire, and it like puts Eddie like down for the count. It knocks him out. Yeah, a little bit. Then the suit like reconstitutes itself and takes Peter out, and then it grabs Peter and tries to absorb him into it. Ah. Is the suit yelling? The suit is... I've, the, the suit and Eddie are yelling. And when it's black bubbles, you get the impression that it's like the two of them joining together. He says something in Venom speak where he's like, Our fathers died to create me! And you're like, maybe it's like the suit influencing his mind. Mm. And so like that's the idea that the two of them come to. But Some piece of the suit imprinted, imprinted onto him. him. There but, is some imprinting going on, but, which I'll get into in a little Eddie bit. Eddie is still like conscious inside. Yes, but it's also like, it's like he's in a suit of madness. <laughs> he's trying to communicate through it and it's only crazy shit's going to come out. Right. So It's like one of those uh, voice scramblers. Right, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so uh, he's fighting Venom in the middle of fucking New York. So, yeah. so so cops show up, sure, and they start shooting at him. Yeah. And like he's taking the bullets, and you know, uh, the the electrical wire that they knocked loose is now like flipping out yeah. and shooting around. And then it eventually just hits it hits Venom, oh. and luckily it you know defeats him. Oh, this and, time. And like some of that smoke you were pointing out earlier is mm-hmm. left behind, and he's gone. Oh shit! So like. Peter thinks that he's vaporized. That he's been vaporized, yeah. And so the cops are like, hey, random kid in a hoodie that was fighting this big monster that we can't explain, get the fuck out of here. Or come over get, here, get I'm going to arrest here. you. Yeah. And so they some questions for you. Him, just yeah. like, because, yeah, they're cops. Then he runs away. And then Peter watches the video that was narrating this entire sequence about his father talking about, like, how the video is made for Peter. Mm. And he's like, but the reality is, like, while I am miserable about my failures, my greatest achievement is my son. And I'm very proud that, like, you know, that I, 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 this sucks, but I get to come home to you. And isn't that nice? And then he dies. And then, he, and then he doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> so then uh, Nick Fury is having lunch outside. And a little he, bit of an epilogue here. Yes. And he gets a call from his bugs that are like, you've been, you're being tailed. And he's like, oh, yeah, no, I know. And uh, 
So he says, like, call off the backup. Like, I'll handle this. No so, offense. I have an eye patch. I, I get tailed everywhere. <laughs> Everybody can sneak up on me. So he leaves, and he goes into an alley, and then he turns on this, like, machine that makes Peter fall off the, off the wall and oh. into the dumpster. Oh, shit. He's like, what the fuck was that? And he's like, oh, it's a, it's a, it, it creates temporary paralysis. It'll wear off in a second or two. It's... And Peter comes out, and he's like, so what's going on? And Pete's like, I don't want to be Spider-Man anymore. I'm out. Oh, uh, what does that mean? You're like, out. I want you to take my powers away. Oh. I'm sure you've got some kind of serum that can do it. <laughs> huh. And he's like, so what happened? Talk, right. to, talk, to, talk to Uncle Nick. Let's hear what's going on. <laughs> and he says, uh, he says, like, my, like, my childhood, he tells him the whole story. He's yeah. like, so a civilian put on this crazy thing and went nuts? Like, you know what? Like, hang on. Uh, so he says, like... Well, Why didn't you call me? Yeah, well, he does not say that. He says, so where is he? Did you kill him? And he's like, no, I didn't kill him. Like, I think he's dead. And he goes, well, where's the body? And he goes, there is no body. He goes, there you go. So he'll be back. And he's like... There's no body. It, you don't vaporize yeah. something. You know but, how, but how much Peter, energy it would take to vaporize a human body? He doesn't say that, but he says, like, if there's no body, there's, there's no death. Yeah. And Peter's not like... <laughs> Don't you know you're in a comic book, son? Yeah, and Peter is not aware of it, so he's like, fuck you. Like, no, right. I, I think... You don't understand... I think I killed someone. I violated the only thing that I believe in. Mm. And that, like, they were my childhood kid, like, friend. Like, I am freaking out. I don't want this. Like, I don't want to be Spider-Man. And uh, he says, like, listen, Peter, do you remember what I said the last time we talked? And he says, like... Get out of uh, my car? No, it was <laughs> it was when uh, Harry was carted away. And he says, like, enjoy your youth, kid, because one day, you know, when you turn 18, you belong to me. Mm. And, uh... And Peter's like, yeah, I remember what you told me. You told me that you were going to, like, arrest me and make me, like, a genetic experiment. And he's like, that's not what I said. And he goes, oh, yeah, you did. And he goes, no, no. I said verbatim, and he quotes what he said, like, a volume ago. Mm -hmm. And he says, like, and then he interprets it, and he says, no, no, no. But what I meant was, like, one day you are going to be an Avenger. They're, they're ultimates in this universe. But right. the, the, the sentiment is there where he's like, one day you're going to work with Captain America. Like, one day you're going to be the best superhero among them. Hmm. But until that time, keep your shit together and shut up. When I said it's your ass is grass, I literally meant you are a part of the circle of life. One day you die and you become the right. grass. Well, and even if he did say your ass is grass, like I'll kick your ass if you don't get your shit together. Like shut up. I'm a, I'm an adult. That doesn't mean I'm infallible. I make I, I say things because I feel. So fuck you. But anyway, shut up. You're freaking out. Knock it off. Calm down. Just calm down. Just stop freaking out. Yeah, like, calm well, down. Well, I was saying that, but Nick is very chill. Yeah. He's just like, you're, you're like a gerbil. You're just freaking, you're, you're all over the place. Like, just, just, just calm down. Could you just, just be less of a teenager down. for like five exactly. goddamn minutes? He's like, just, 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 just keep your shit huh. together. I really can't. And he's like, how did my parents die? Mm. And Nick's like, I, I don't know. I don't like, know. Plane crash, I heard. He goes, when did they die? He goes, 10 years ago. And he goes, I don't know. <laughs> and he says, yeah, no, I bet you do know. He goes, what? Now I'm your sh the first time you shrink and now I killed your parents? He goes, kid, like 10 years ago I was in college in India. And he's like, oh. He's like, yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't know your parents. <laughs> and he's like, oh, uh, sorry, I don't mean to... I, I wasn't trying to impl imply you killed my parents. And he's like, yeah, you were. But like, I am projecting that. <laughs> yeah, he's like, but like, listen, like, I get it. I know, I know what it's it was like. It's not that implausible. Me. Right. I, I mean, you, listen, out of everyone you... true, but... And it is true. I did kill your parents, but Bendis didn't know that yet, so <laughs> we're gonna retcon it. But right. yeah, no, Nick did kill his parents. Not like on not purpose, intentionally, but, right, but like he is some way. wholly responsible. What? No, a, a integral Shit. member of the Ultimate Universe did kill Richard and Mary Parker. Oh, but I won't get into it now. Oops. But uh, they did not die in a plane crash. Ah. Oh. All right. No. Dun, dun, dun. And Nick Fury is directly responsible. So, uh, but anyway. it's not like he pulled the trigger or ordered them dead. No, 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 no. Yeah. no. Nick did know them though, like intimately. Mm. So uh, Nick's like, anyway, get your shit together, get out of here. I get it. It's being, it's called being a teenager. I've been there. <laughs> Just shut up, right? And leave me alone. I get it. It's being a teenager. How do you think I lost the eye? Right. And oh, by the way, like, don't bother me anymore. Like, don't do this. <laughs> like, don't, don't, don't tail me. Yeah. And like, make my, make my like security entourage freak out. Jesus Christ. So then... Uh, I was trying to enjoy my dinner. Yeah. So then Peter goes to the dorm. The, P the the Eddie dorm. Yeah. And he runs into Eddie's roommate who's like, 
friggin' like jackass took all his shit and left, and he's like, oh, he so owns the TV. Run. So he's not prick. Dead. So he's not dead. Yeah. yeah. And he says, like, why do you hate Eddie so much? And he says, like, because he's a bad person. Like, he's a liar. He would lie about things that, like, you knew were true. Mm -hmm. That you knew he would... He and you knew that it was a lie, and he he still lied about it. Like, he was creepy to women. He treated them badly. He, He used people. These are the things you didn't know because you didn't bother to find out. Right. But he's, but he's gone now, and good riddance to him. Mm-hmm. The world is better for it. Yeah. Certainly this dorm room is. Right. <laughs> so then Peter goes into the lab, and when he gets in there, he goes to check to see like if right. there's more. And instead, Dr. Kirk Connors is waiting for him. Ah. And he's already... I knew you back, you son of a bitch. Yeah, and he's already completely smashed. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you're Peter Parker. I know this because, like... I know all about Eddie, and I know I've been working with him. I, I know this because you're in a very expensive high tech lab, which is covered in video cameras. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, There's I know. Security here. And he's I've sa- seen everything. Yeah. And he goes. So I was watching TV the other day. I see Spider Man wearing my suit, the suit that I worked with Eddie on, and I thought, hmm, your suit. Yeah. Oh, what you designed? No, it? he's already done with the suit. But he says, <laughs> "Tis the season to be sharing, Doctor." <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> So Sorry. he calls him out and he's just like, you're Peter Parker, you're Spider-Man, whatever, I don't give a shit. He goes, did you ever tell anybody about the time when I became a lizard? And he's like, no, I didn't. He goes, oh, then I guess we're even. Hmm. Anyway. Well, like, I got dirt on you, you got dirt on me. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, Mutually just, uh, assured destruction, fair exactly. enough. So he says, like, so the suit's gone and all the notes are gone. Uh, can you at least tell me, like, why? And he's like, oh, it's bad. It turns you into a monster. He goes, all right. Well, Turns you into a monster. I don't know anything about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's like, all right, well, fuck. There goes my funding. Damn it. Well, my life's ruined. Yeah. And he's like, you know, I'm sorry. You know, and, and he's like, uh, and they have a little back and forth about Richard Parker and how, like, you know, he invented this fucking monster. And now, you know, he's mm. like, it's like, my dad was trying to cure cancer. He goes, Einstein wasn't trying to invent the bomb either. Mm. Sorry, kid. <laughs> so then Pete leaves and he like feels like he's being followed because his spider sense goes off and he thinks it's Eddie Yeah. and he just like, yells into the heavens like Eddie I'm sorry and then he's just left there like alone Dark. and that's the story like, whoa it ends Venom. there? it ends yeah. there no, jeez no yeah. resolution no closure no. for Peter Parker but if you get Ultimate <coughs> Spider-Man for the N64 you can get the next chapter of what happens with Ultimate Venom <laughs> what? yeah the uh, Mark Bagley is the artistic director and the designer of the game, and Bendis wrote it, and it is a straight-up chapter in Ultimate Spider-Man that wow. is not uh, recreated for comics, but is referenced in the comics. So if you don't have it, you're missing a little chapter in Ultimate Spider-Man. That's crazy! Yeah. Wow. By the way, pretty fun game and a really riveting story. So, like... Worth it, I think. Hmm. Unfortunately, there's a lot of chase missions. Green Goblin's going this way. Chase right. him. Don't lose him. Don't. Or you got to start the whole goddamn round over. Again. Are there protection missions too? No. Oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> but in that story, so if you're really good at web swinging, chase mission, yes, you have to be really good at web swinging. Also, like, the N64 controller sucked. That one. Oh, I'm sorry. This, it was the GameCube. Oh, okay. Which is a way. I was like, no, the control was great. It was GameCube. I'm sorry. In any case, great game. Uh, really well, fun. Yeah. But it two, also... Two thumbsticks then. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so Venom is the main thing in that. And like Roxxon wants him. Mm. And so and so they hire like Silver Sable and shit. Anyway, the Venom throughout like the story doesn't have the white spider. And it's because like he's unstable and he's a mess. There's a piece of the suit still inside Peter. Mm. And that's how like Venom can keep finding him. Like Venom can find Spider-Man because it can feel... When he's near this like piece of itself, but it's a different suit. I right? know, but it's still like a thing. He needs this. He needs this component that was part of the original suit. Okay. And when he gets it, like he does, wind up like taking Peter and he absorbs him and he takes this, the piece out. Mm-hmm. And when he does, he gets the white spider, so he gets to look like Venom again. Okay. I'm a little surprised that it didn't get that during the battle. Yeah, me too. And I don't know if it's because Ben is like, no, I'll save it for the video game. I think it's more like, I'll save it for the story. And then they were like, do you want to do a game? And he's like, yes, and I'll do this. So, yeah. But it's a neat little tie-in that works. Kind of. And if you don't have time for that, you could just go to YouTube and watch the whole all the cutscenes. Which is just as good. Hmm. I mean, you'll lose the game experience, but whatever. Also, yeah, but if you don't have a GameCube. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm sure there's ROMs. But you can switch between Venom and Spider-Man, though. Like, you play as Venom, and it's cool. You just you just grab people and eat them. Yes. Wait, like, you're a bad guy when you're playing it? Yeah. Well, oh, Venom, shit. Yeah. yeah, you play, like, his part of the story. That's cool. That is a little crazy. It is cool. That's it's a fun game. And Venom's also stronger, so you can, like, pick up cars and throw them. Nice. It's cool. It's a fun game. He can I pick th- up a bus. Peter can only pick up, like, a Volkswagen Beetle. Exactly. So, Ultimate Spider-Man Venom is cool and fun. And it does something... T- it does exactly what it's set out to do. Something else. Anyone can do Venom again. It takes, like, actual effort and talent to, like, do something totally different that you've never seen that is shades of what you remember. Eddie's still a dick, well, but he's but, connected to Peter, per- like, personally. And he also, like, likes Peter in the beginning, but then has a different reason for hating him. Yeah, and... You know, he they're they're consistent characters. Like Eddie is a dick, so it doesn't take much for him to immediately betray or at least like turn mentally on him. It's like they're all against me. Everyone's a shithead, even Peter. Yep. It's like yeah. Like, well, I'm not gonna listen to you because like you tried to steal. Yeah, you, you, what was ours? You 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 hurt me, so now you're dead to me. Like you you offended me a little bit. Yeah. You took from me, and therefore. I, I've completely written you off. Well, not only that, but, like, I was working on this thing with Dr. Connors. Right. Like, I'm the one in college. I'm... Yeah. You, I, don't, I don't even really know that you're into science and all that shit. That's true. But he doesn't like, really articulate that. I'm either. the college student. I'm the science guy. I'm the one that was working on this suit trying to make it better. And you stole that. Right. Well, it's also, like, I'm not even special anymore. Like, my dad created this thing with this guy and he would, would like died and left me alone and I'm carrying on his legacy then it turns out there's like 50% of that is, is not mine and it turns out even Brock didn't really even and, and like after, he helped but like he's not he's not the brains of behind course. the outfit. and after the 50% or whatever divvying you want to say happened mm-hmm. but like after they worked on it and it was going to be ours you took it yeah and, now, and I was never going to have it again. Now, Peter, I don't think, was going to steal from him. I think the idea was that he, was, he wanted no, to once improve it. Even after it's destroyed. Oh, yeah. Like, we have to destroy it. Oh, like, yeah, you took it. Take it away from me. Yeah, now. now it's gone. Now I don't even think, like, yeah, no. It's true. I mean, it's understandable, but it's also, like, indefensible. Mm. It's frustrating. Like, yeah. it's supposed to be. That's, well, uh, that's, it's, yeah, it would make sense that he's mad and he wouldn't be upset. Right. But he takes it too far. Yeah. He does something reckless and dangerous. But that's the thing. Like, he's, he's consistent in his characterization of, like, an angry person. Yeah. You know, like, I get why you're angry, but you're taking it too far. hmm So. There you go. Ultimate Spider-Man. I'll put a link in the description box below this video so you can pick it up, and hopefully we won't wait too long for the next volume, but, like... But maybe we will. But maybe we will. You never know. Yeah. Maybe you stop asking to deal with it. Yeah, because yeah. that's, that's how it works. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it. But we're we're going to get clo- We're going to get deeper into the Ultimate Universe. Like, we're going to meet the X-Men pretty soon. Deeper and deeper. Way, way, way down. <laughs> <laughs> well, you killed Ben. Thanks a lot, everybody. All right, we'll see you next week. Bye.